Now, I have already rejected your definition of objective reality. I've rejected your premises. I've rejected your conclusions. So, I might as well stop here. But there's one more fallacy that I will not let go. And that is the one where you claim that Allah, what you call Allah, is just another word for this objective reality. No. Because, first of all, why don't you just call it reality then, if that's what it is? If that's what it is, why not just call it reality, so we can all agree on what we're talking about? Why insist on calling it Allah, and why insist on introducing this religion around it? There must be more to it than that. So let's explore what you had to say about it. Allah is, in fact, a creator God. And, apparently, according to the Quran, a creator God who is keenly interested in our human affairs. So in that light, I must reject your following comments. For example, you reject Zeus. And for what reason? By all accounts, because you don't like the cut of his jib. And that is a bit weird, to be perfectly honest with you. Because all you presented there was an image, a picture which is an artist's impression of what Zeus, or of Zeus, yeah? It's an artist's impression. It's artistic license applied to their idea of God, which happened to be Zeus. But, if you were to go back in time and debate with ancient Greek theologians, and you were to ask them what the true nature of Zeus was, I wouldn't be surprised if you would get an answer that was quite similar to how you described your Allah. Similarly, India, for example, has a long tradition of artistic interpretation of its religious ideas. So representing Krishna with a blue skin is not enough to reject the idea of Krishna or Vishnu, or any other god that India has ever produced. It isn't good enough. But, what I found really funny was your final, your kind of sort of closing statements. The ones where you were talking about the deep inconsistencies in Christianity and Judaism. What I found very, very disingenuous about that was that you were sort of pushing the argument that your religion would have to be true by default. You see, we can both agree that Christianity and Judaism are full of internal contradictions. But rejecting all 999 other religions in the world doesn't mean the 1000th religion true. Your religion is not true by default you still have to present your evidence for your religion. So, it isn't good enough. That's the, the, the long and the short of it. Your argument falls down right at the start, anyway, as I've already shown. But even if I gave you all the crutches in the world to help you stumble along to your final conclusions, even they are completely unacceptable. You still hold the obligation, even if you could convince me, which you are far from having done yet, even if you could convince me that there is indeed a Creator God, you have not even started to convince anybody that that Creator God then must be Allah. It could be a mystery unto everybody, including all the Muslims in the world. So, so far, you haven't done very well, I'm afraid, my friend. And there's a lot more for you to do. On the other hand, you might be getting tired of this, which I can imagine. And for that reason, I would like to remind you again of what this uh, debate is about. The debate we are engaged in is a debate between you, who is making 
a very strong claim, an extraordinary claim, and me who doesn't, who is not convinced by you. Now I would be quite happy to leave it at that, under one condition, that you accept that it is perfectly reasonable for me to remain unconvinced, and that nobody, absolutely nobody, not even your God, would have the right to judge me on that. Can you do that? Then the debate is over. Otherwise, you've got a lot of work to do, my friend.